So here we are carrying on with our tactical architectural history. We're at the house of Paula Chrysler at 1401 East 48th Street. And we're here with John Bennett and Nick Palumbo, our tactical architectural history team. And we're about to do a quick architectural history assessment of Paula's house. So she's a champion of food causes here in Savannah and part of the great citizenry of Parkside. So the house at 1401 East 48th Street is yet another bungalow. Parkside's full of bungalows, those one-story houses that catered to the working class and, and middle classes who in this streetcar suburb. So this one, you can see, has a classical porch, a prominent gable, but I wouldn't call this craftsman because this one doesn't have the rafter tails, it doesn't have a prominent external chimney, but what it does have is a very prominent gable both on the front and in a second we'll go around the side it has a big gable on the sides so this is what we call a cross gable house and essentially it's drawing from classical traditions not only with the porch but with the polygonal bay but typical of the kind of houses that are arts and crafts and bungalows in general it's very informal so it's not like those uh, fancy colonial revivals at the door in the middle, but rather the casual bungalow form of a cl classical house. But it really is interesting. You can just make it the roof slopes down and forms a gable on the sides and a prominent gable in the front. The, here we can see the side gable and up at the top, Alderman Palumbo just noticed that this has buff colored brick rather than the usual red brick. In fact, we can go one better that this is what we call wire cut buff brick meaning that there's, it's it literally a wire cut the bricks and it leaves a kind of vertical striation on the sides of the brick. So up at the top there, buff colored brick chimney, somewhat unusual. And here we are in front of 1226 East 48th Street carrying on with our tactical architectural history. And this house is yet another a bungalow and it too is in the craftsman style. Once again we have those rafter tails very prominent. You can see them across the top of the porch and the the rafter tails along with the porch columns. Now these columns were presumably manufactured for this house. They there are three of them. It's interesting how how craftsman bungalows tend to emphasize informality so the fact that they've got three of them with the steps that come up between the two on the right and then the door is sort of casually sent not even centered situated more or less in the in the middle sort of of the facade but off to the left and it's sort of irregularly related to the middle column which is or pier rather which is somewhat in front of it so there's clearly not the kind of formality we expect of grander homes where you'd never put a column in front of a door but this one has these the three piers are also tapering they're very tall but they taper as they rise and a tapering pier is a classic example of a uh, craftsman bungalow Ooh. and carrying on with what we're doing Alderman Palumbo is our chalk man, as I've mentioned before, and actually these are technically called piers, but we'll leave it as columns for now. Oh, all right. Here we go. Yes, we got to keep our architectural vocabulary correct, and we are, they are called piers because they are square. They're not cylindrical. Ah, okay. I learned something there. Well, it's important not to... Uh put out any uh, new rumors out there because these <laughs> things have a tendency to, and to, to grow legs and, and people will say years from now I remember when we did the architectural history walk and they wrote columns on the sidewalk so. yeah well and this house is 1920 <laughs> part of our essential effort at doing tactical architectural history is it's a bit like curling we have to have the broom man clear the way for the architectural history and John Bennett is an expert at clearing the way for all sorts of different things. And so he's showing off his, his excellent... Uh, and we also, in this era of coronavirus, that is our social distancing measuring stick. That's it, that's it. So, he needs it. He needs it for us. So here we are in front of 1508 East 48th. 
at a part of Parkside that was developed in the post-war years when houses uh, wanted to carry on being part of a traditional suburb, but the taste or the ability to get a craftsman bungalow or something more traditional wasn't in the cards. And uh, either it was no longer in style, but this is a good example of what we call a minimal traditional house. It's basically a bungalow, one, once again, but it has forms, in this case, a hipped roof. So let's go a little closer. So the form is a bungalow, once again, and the house has been covered in aluminum siding, which is part of the reality of post-war architecture. There's probably wooden siding under this, but by the 50s or 60s, maybe even into the 70s, covering your house in siding was a great way to dress it up, to refresh it, without the maintenance of having to paint a wooden house every 10 years. It has a very simple porch with its own little hip roof, and we can see a typical characteristic of the post-war years is the picture window in the living room. So we have the large single pane of glass, which was more achievable and affordable on an average house in the post-war years. And otherwise, the typical informal plan of, of a bungalow. So it's the casual living in the suburbs, pushed back from the curb. But also an important detail we notice here, we're having to do this on the driveway because as we, as a, a neighborhood like Parkside develops in the post-war years, the idea of being a pedestrian is giving way to automobiles. And so driveways are cut into the front yards and sidewalks were never paved in this end of the neighborhood. So come back to see what houses we visit for tactical architectural history next time.